Hello everybody and welcome to a new video for Jurassic World Evolution 2 where we have the new announcement of the Jurassic World Evolution 2 Secret Species Pack. A brand new DLC focusing on hybrids and a seemingly large amount of bioluminescence. And there is not actually a lot to cover with this one. It's fairly simple in, the, in this DLC case. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this pack has four new species, the first being the Spinoceratops, a species coming from Camp Cretaceous on Manticore Island, where we were introduced to the two baby Spinoceratops, Angel and Rebel, one of which is replicated here with one of the skins. I think, I want to say that this one is Rebel, but it could be Angel. They were very close, but they did have different hues. Either way, this is showing stark resemblance to the one from Camp Cretaceous with that beautiful blue coloration. Now, when it comes to the Spinoceratops, I do wonder if this will be an omnivore, as in the show, we did see the Spinoceratops feeding on fish. So this could potentially be our first piscivorous quadruped. So that will be an interesting thing to see come to life. And I will be interested to see the sound design for this animal, whether it will be the same as Spinoceratops or will be a little bit different. We also get a beautiful look at the bioluminescence on these nighttime Spinoceratops with a variety of skins. The one in the foreground here looks like it's got a very Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus look and then with the bright bioluminescence on the sail. I don't know how many colors these bioluminescent Spinoceratops will have but it is certainly beautiful to look at and I'm really excited to be able to use these guys in my parks. However, one of the best additions is the remodeled Ankylodocus. So this was a species that was featured in the Secrets of Dr. Wu DLC in the first Jurassic World Evolution 2 as well as the two other hybrids. In the first game it was not the best thing to look at I will admit. It was a bit dopey. I'll say that. It, it did what it wanted to do. It wanted to be an Ankylosaurus mixed with the Diplodocus. But I feel like this one takes that to the next level being more true to a more Ankylosaurus look rather than sticking very closely with Diplodocus and really creating a good blend of the two. I'm also getting a few Godzilla vibes from it, which I think is pretty cool. But I really love the new head shape and the new dorsal spines and, of course, the shortened tail with the club. I think they've really knocked it out of the park with this one. Another returning species is Stegoceratops from the first Jurassic World Evolution 2. Pretty much the same, I like to say, as its first original introduction, although I think the horns have been reduced in length, and it's got a lot more detail, of course, from the first game, and I think a reduced amount of plates. I don't know. But it is very similar to its first initial incarnation. I was kind of hoping for a Nasutoceratops version to really harken back to the original concept art for Jurassic World when it was going to include the Stegoceratops. But that doesn't seem to be the case here, but instead we do get the original Jurassic World Evolution Stegoceratops here with some beautiful bioluminescent colours. And I've seen that this is perhaps the most exciting reintroduction of a hybrid to the to the games. Spinoraptor, one of everyone's favourite hybrid carnivores, and in this case will be a Piscivore as well. And I know a lot of people were really hoping for Spinoraptor to come back to the game, and it comes back pretty much with the same model, with a few extra details, and I wonder if there'll be a skin that can get you really close to that original look. But it looks great here, and we do actually get a look at its bioluminescent form. In a quick shot in the trailer, we do get a look at this beautiful pink on the Spinoraptor here. I think this species will be really cool. I don't know if it'll pack hunt. As the Uteraptor doesn't pack on now, I wonder if it'll be a similar size range, as it was a pretty large animal in the first game. But that's not all, we are also getting bioluminescent skins for the existing Indoraptor and Indominus Rex. Unfortunately, Scorpius Rex is missing out in this category, but Indoraptor looks beautiful here, and I can't wait to see the Indominus Rex and how that looks. Now, I would like to take the time to speak here on the fact that this is an interesting DLC in the case of it, including species that were technically paid for in the first game but weren't reintroduced in the base of the second game. 
Now that's understandable. Like I, I know a few people didn't really like the hybrids from this DLC, but we are having them now. Having to pay for them again, which I have seen has annoyed a few people. Personally, that hasn't really annoyed me, as I did kind of see this coming. If we were to get a hybrid DLC and these guys were going to be part of it, I thought they were actually going to be part of the DLC, and that seems to be the case. I only say this because Spinoceratops was the only remaining canonical hybrid that would have been able to come into the pack. Uh, of course, you can argue Ultimosaurus, but in the case of filling in that um, empty space, Stegoceratops and Colodicus and Spinoraptor fit that category perfectly. And I have seen a lot of people being annoyed with this, wanting them to have been free instead, but hey, that's, that's just business for you, I guess. But... One of the most disappointing exclusions from this DLC um, season is a chunky free update. As when we've gotten DLCs, we've often got a large free update to accompany it. And more often than not, the free update has been much more exciting than the DLC itself, really amping up the features that you can find in the game. Like last time, I believe we got some brand new variants for many of the dinosaurs. And some interesting pack chase behaviors, all sorts of new features were added in that update. And of course the updates beforehand and so on. We got some really good updates with the DLCs, but in this case we're not getting a, a large free update with this pack. Instead a smaller update with bug fixes, which is generally much more akin to the smaller um, patch updates. So that's sort of what I can get from here. And of course some features will be fixed and that's always a good thing. But we're not getting a large free update in this one, that's what I'm saying here. Now it is a little bit disappointing of a pack, but I'm not too disappointed with it. I think it's a pretty good pack for what it's trying to do. And I'll certainly be checking it out when it releases tomorrow. For me at least, um, it releases in the evening of tomorrow. That's very, very good. Very close to the release date. It's very similar to what happened with the late Cretaceous pack. Had a very tight announcement and release time schedule. But this is just when... It, in two days of each other, which is very interesting. But let me know in the comments down below what you think of this new DLC. Do you like it? Do you hate it? I, I've seen both in the community as this has been announced. But personally, I'm excited to see all the animals in action here and I'm excited to use all the bioluminescent skins. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like. And if you would like to subscribe, I would appreciate that as well. But as for now, that is all from Jurassic World Evolution 2 today. And I'll see you when the DLC releases. See you guys later.